this model and it's a pretty good high-end 15 inch ultrabook slash well more than just an ultrabook kind of machine like the other two it has the same flip design there's a release hinge right here and you can flip the display we'll show you that in a bit like the other two it has a full hd ips triluminous display obviously 15.5 inches so it's bigger Inside, you could get order it with an SSD if you wanted. In this model, you're going to get a 1 terabyte 5400 Western Digital Drive with 16 gigs of NAND flash. That's not a separate mSATA drive there. That's actually integrated into the hard drive for caching, and it's reasonably effective to reduce Windows load times and program load times. 8 gigs of RAM, that, that's a hallmark of the Flip series. We're glad to see Sony moving up to 8 gigs of RAM in there. And this was, one has Intel Wi-Fi in 7260 single brand 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. That's what's confusing with that particular Intel adapter. There's a couple of different configurations. So single band Wi-Fi here. For the price, we'd really like to see dual band. It is a PCI Express card. You could actually swap it out for a dual band card if you wanted to. What's really interesting about this machine is, number one, it's less buggy than the 13 inch flip. Number two, there's a lot of upgradable parts inside. If you want to be just slightly brave and open this guy up, screws on the bottom right here, torque screws, and you're going to have to pry off the little rubber strip here. Not too hard. There's adhesive on the strip. It will, generally speaking, adhere to the strip if you take it off to get some more screws. You have access to two RAM slots in here. So you can go up to 16 gigs of RAM if you get two 8 gig sticks. That's pretty darn nice. Standard SATA hard drive bay, 2.5 inch, 7 millimeter height. So if you want to upgrade to your own SSD drive aftermarket, it's easy to find. That's the most common standard notebook size drive to put inside of here. And again, 7 millimeter high, you have to use a thinner one. Most of them on the market, like the Samsung 840 Evo, they are 7 millimeter drives. Also, as I mentioned, the wireless card is socketed. So nice about this is that you can do some tinkering and upgrading. Most Ultrabooks, pretty much everything is soldered on, and the SSD drive is either mSATA, M2, PCI Express. It's, it's getting pretty hard to find those drives if you want to do something yourself aftermarket. So for those of you who want a little future-proofing in terms of being able to change your storage out, increase the RAM, there you go. CPU, that's soldered on board. The graphics, soldered on board. Also neat about this model is it has dual graphics, as NVIDIA Optimus graphics, so you have the usual Intel HD 4400 graphics, and this still uses Intel Haswell 4th generation Ultrabook CPUs, 15 watt ones, so you can get the Core i5 4200U, the Core i7 4500U, which is what we have in here, but you also get NVIDIA GT 735M dedicated graphics with 2 gigs of graphics memory inside. So that makes this something of a light to moderate gaming machine. And also it's good for those of you who do a lot of image editing work, some video editing work. Good stuff. And given the fact that this has an active digitizer with the Ntrig digitizer technology, I think a lot of you just might want to use this for artwork and image manipulation, that kind of thing weighs five pounds so as 15.5 inch or 15 inch class ultrabooks go that's not too terribly heavy obviously it's not ultrabook light though the flip 13 is three pounds the flip 14 is four pounds so you keep going up a pound in weight as you go up the scale of things as you can see it's very slim very stylish same design as we saw on the flip 13 just gets bigger it also has that kind of overhang design that Sony thinks is attractive. And yeah, it is attractive, but it makes it a little annoying because you really have to look around the edge to see your ports. So you can see here you get plenty of ports. Big machine means room for ports. Two USB 3.0 ports right here. Full-size HDMI as well. Ventilation. On the other side, we have another USB 3.0 port. We have our full-size SD card slot, our combo audio jack, and gigabit Ethernet. A little drop down right there. And of course our power button. It, Sony puts that on the side and there's a volume control back here. So when you're using it in tablet mode, you have access to hardware controls without having to resort to the keyboard. So you can see there's rubber feet over here to keep the back end up a little bit for better typing and also to give the ventilation, well, some free flow right there. Nice metal case, uh, available in silver or black, your choice. Shows fingerprints. You have to wipe it with a damp cloth, maybe a little bit of soft soap or something like that to get those things off. Bottom is plastic. Overall, a nice quality machine. Yeah, given the design and how thin it is, this doesn't feel like a 
Dell XPS machine or one of those rugged think pads, I'm not going to drop this on the table to prove how durable it is. I just wouldn't do that with this. So those of you who are wondering, thinking about maybe the Flip 13 versus the XPS 12, e this is not meant to be abused, I have the feeling. Not that it's flimsy or anything like that, it's just, mm, it doesn't inspire the same level of I want to abuse it confidence. The lid opens up. Boy, this is one stiff hinge. I, will this loosen up with time? I don't know. Since this is a big piece of glass, I would use two hands to open it just to support it so that we don't torque the glass. It's not that it's flimsy. It's actually pretty rigid here, but again, it's just the feeling that you get with it. The stiffness is nice. So when you do this, you're not getting, I mean, I can really, you know, if I hit it, bounce it a lot, I'm also bouncing the table at that point. But if you're using it for artwork with normal pressure like this, it doesn't move a lot. And aha, uh -huh, if you use the flip release, you can see how this flips right here, like so. If you want to use it for artwork, you can set up just about like that and draw on it, which is what I do, and it's stiff enough that you actually can. So that's a really great position, because at 5 pounds and 15.5 inches, this is not something that you're just going to put in the crook of your arm when you're drawing, but if you put it down the desk and use it like this, it's great. Of course, you can also put it down all the way and use it in full tablet mode. We have a little bit of an angle right there, there's an accelerometer that will handle screen rotation for you, so put it the right way up. Keeps the home button, which is a mechanical clicky type at the bottom as well. So the slope is also comfortable, and some of you may want to use it like so. IPS display, so viewing angles are good. Actually, among the Flip 13, 14, and 15, I'd say the 15 seems to have the best viewing angles. This is a glossy full HD display of Sony's Triluminous technology, again with their quantum dots. It is a gorgeous display. Man, watching movies on this is just a treat. Supports 10 points of multi-touch and also the Entrig pen. Now, Sony sells the pen optionally on this 1249 Best Buy model. We have, well, this is a pen supplied by Entrig themselves. Nice, pretty orange color. It's the same as what Sony gives you in terms of functionality, except I happen to have a little grippier tip on it. That's something that Entrig is working on. So it works with the pen as well. Now that's really nice on a 13 inch because UI elements are pretty teeny at full HD. On this, honestly, UI elements, and I have 100% scaling going right here, so the icons are not even a large, the touch points are pretty good, even though obviously desktop windows is not so much designed for touch. When it comes to color gamut, you can see right here, 96% of sRGB, that is very good. It's also right up there with the Flip 13. So for those of you who are graphics professionals, that's desirable, wide color gamut. It not only does it mean prettier pictures and videos with more colors, gee, it also means that you're gonna get better color accuracy. And 75% of Adobe RGB. As laptops go, this is as good as you're gonna get. In terms of brightness, we're measuring it at 260 nits of brightness, which is not wildly bright. It's fine for indoor use. It's enough to combat glare indoors. Outdoors, eh, not so much. Contrast is very good at 660 to 1, and black levels are also good as well. Now, for those of you who are feeling adventurous, love those high-resolution displays, and got $300 additional to spend, you can actually get this with a 2880 by 1620 pixel display. Yo, a lot of pixels there. Pixels are in fashion now. Apple started that whole thing with their retina displays. Windows is just not quite all there yet. Now, Windows 8, and even 8.1 particularly, handles scaling pretty well. UI elements are visible. You can use scaling to control that. You can even set scaling independently on the displays. But the problem is not all Windows applications respect Windows DPI settings. So you know how it is. Photoshop, gee, nice to have all those pixels. The menus, you need a microscope to see them. So it's up to you if you really want that super high resolution display. I find running this 1920 by 1080 at 15.5 inches just kind of the perfect sweet spot where you don't need any scaling and everything just works. If you like to play games, you're not going to have to bounce resolutions around deal with issues where Windows has some particular issues when switching orientations and suddenly changing resolutions at the same time. They'll work these things out. So that's up to you. $300 additional. Speaking of $300 additional, if you want to take $300 off the price of this model, or $250 or so, you can go down to $999 and you can get this without the dedicated graphics and with a 750 gig hard drive instead of a terabyte. I mean, that's all that's probably more than most of us are ever going to use in terms of storage, but that takes you down to the Core i5. I kind of like this configuration myself. I think the money is actually worth it. In terms of how the hinge works, it's the same as on the Flip 13. This is the pivot point right here. It's kind of freaky. 
Uh, Sony is very good at designing weird things like this that actually hold up with time and work well, so I'm not too worried as long as you're nice to this and you don't, you know, grab it and try to carry it and twist it, you know, in, in evil kind of ways. I think if you take care of it and you play nicely with it, it's going to work well. If we turn it from the side, you can see this is how it works. Just really like a split in the lid, and this is what it looks like from the back side. And there is a lock here, lock slider. And with the 13, I left it unlocked all the time. With this one, because the display is so big, I found that pushing on it would tend to flip it out of position. So I actually do use the lock when I'm in laptop mode. And notice you have to push this back sufficiently so it doesn't actually hit the keys here. But yeah, if you poke this, you, you might actually get it flipping again. So use the lock button when it's in laptop mode. That's my advice. The screen goes reasonably far back, not super far back. That's as far as it goes. I find that I generally don't need it to go back any further. And if I did, I'd probably start using it in a convertible position. You can, of course, use it in that presentation mode. We just has it, had it in. You can use it in tablet mode if you want. Keyboard deck. Nice, pretty metal stuff right here, just like the lid. Large synaptics trackpad. We're always happy to see synaptics. Surface texture is good, a little bit rough. It's a, it's a good trackpad. It's not the greatest. Uh, some driver updates could probably improve that some. It does support swiping gestures, multi-finger touch, that kind of thing. It works good. It's not the greatest. What I have a problem with is that the clickers are very, very stiff on this. It takes some effort. You can do tap to click, too, but for those of you who actually like to click, boy, that's a stiff one. Keyboard, large, roomy, of course, 15-inch device. It is backlit as well. Backlighting works well. It's all controlled by Sony's ambient light sensor there, so you don't have control over backlight staging on that. Perfectly normal layout up here. Some multimedia keys up here. You use the FN key if you want to activate those. There's not a whole lot of spring here. A little bit if I go pushing down. Very, very little. Some people have called this springy. It, it's not so much that it's springy, really. It, 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 it's the fact that there's very little travel here. For a 15-inch machine, yes, I know it's skinny. It's an ultrabook. There is just not a lot of key travel. It's not a joyous keyboard to type on. It's not hideous either, but... I mean, there's some movement there. After you use a Lenovo or Dell XPS keyboard, though, you're going to say, well, you could do better. How about noise? That was the bane of the Flip 13's existence, and even after some firmware updates, it's still kind of a vacuum cleaner unless you put it on the low-power energy management saving setting and thereby reduce your performance a bit. More room here for ventilation for fans. Good news is it is not a vacuum cleaner. In fact, it's pretty much normal. If you're just sitting there typing in Word, looking at the web, even streaming HD video, you won't even hear the fan. Once in a while it's going to come on, but nothing offensive to say the least. Now this has gone through a couple of firmware updates too. One of them, in fact, did quiet the fan some. But for a 15.5 inch notebook with these kind of internals, no complaints absolutely with the fan noise. Now if you're going to play games, and we're going to have a separate gaming demo since this does have dedicated graphics, the fan will come on. Anything that is a slim and light or ultrabook when you play games, you are going to hear the fan. You have to move to something like the Asus Republic of Gamer or an MSI gaming machine if you really want something that has quiet operation when gaming. So take that for what you will. If you're running VMs, doing software development, running multiple VMs, if you're exporting full HD video, you'll hear the fan come on, and it's not going to be quiet, but it's only going to come on while it's working hard, and it does cool down very quickly when you're done. I played half an hour of Skyrim, and when I stopped, within a minute, the fans ramped back down. When I was playing Skyrim, yeah, you could hear them. Battery life on this guy... This is the price you pay for something that is slim and made as relatively light as possible. Sony claims five hour run times. I find that they're actually being a little bit shy there because we've managed to exceed that already. Of course, going to Windows 8.1, this one shipped with Windows 8, actually helped Windows 8.1 does further improve battery life. And Haswell Ultrabook CPUs are power efficient. When using this with dedicated graphics not engaged, the NVIDIA Optimus handles that, doing productivity kind of work and streaming video where Intel HD 4400 is more than capable enough. Really, I manage 5.5, sometimes even 6 hours with this, and that's what the brightness set at about 35%, which is as low as I would personally want to go on this display. If you do a mix of more demanding tasks, I would count on that 5 that Sony promises from the 48 watt hour 3170 milliamp battery that is sealed inside, though if you take those screws off, you do have access to the battery inside.
So how about performance? First off, that, that hybrid hard drive actually does a good job with Windows boot times and also with application launch times. It's not as fast as an SSD when you're launching programs, particularly if it's something really with a lot of resources to load like today's 3D games, but overall it's a pretty good performer. So our model with the 1.8 GHz Core i7-4500U, 8 gigs of RAM, that terabyte hybrid hard drive, NVIDIA GT 735M graphics scored 3557 on PC Mark 7. Now why is that lower than some Ultrabooks? Because PC Mark puts a lot of weight on SSD drives. This does not have an SSD drive. You can order it with one if you want. You can put one in yourself, but it does not have it. That's why you're noticing the difference in the benchmarks. 3D Mark 11 uh, performance test 1774. That's a lot better than the 700s to 900s that we still see with Intel HD 4400 graphics that even beats Intel Iris 5100 graphics on the ASUS ZenBook UX301 that we recently reviewed. So enough performance there for some light gaming to moderate gaming. W Prime, it computed Pi in 19.6 seconds, which is par for the course for that Core i7 CPU. Geekbench 3, 2964 single core, 5809 multi core, good showing there on Geekbench 3. Cinebench R15, the CPU test at 244, and we actually got to run the OpenGL test since this has dedicated graphics and it scored 48.6 frames per second. So good showing there on benchmarks, uh, generally speaking, what we would expect from what this machine has inside. Does it feel fast? Yes, it feels fast. It, it's, it's plenty fast. Now, the only difference would be between this and another machine. If you have really serious, intense computing needs, you might still want to look for something with a full mobile quad-core CPU inside instead of an Ultrabook CPU. You know who you are if you're doing something like compiling 900,000 lines of code, for example. You might want that. And now to test out the speakers and to play video, this is Sony's Bravia 4K test video. So obviously even Intel HD 4400 graphics can handle 4K playback. You can see the color saturation on the screen is just stunning. And the speakers are set to their default music profile at 66% volume, so no bad speakers either for a 15-inch notebook. Certainly there are better for, for say, some of the Samsung's JBL-equipped laptops, but that's, that's pretty good. Pretty good volume, pretty good quality. Just a joy to watch movies on this, honestly. This full HD display is gorgeous. And in terms of Wi-Fi quality, I know that can be an issue with some Sony laptops. This one has, again, the single-band Intel-made 7260N adapter, and we've had no problem with signal quality or strength or dropouts, anything like that. It is 2.4 gigahertz only. You won't get the same speeds as you would with dual band if you're using the 5 gigahertz spectrum, but overall, it, it's been solid for us. It also has Bluetooth 4.0 and NFC. So we have our Entrig pen, and again, Sony doesn't include the pen with this. This is a separate purchase for $40. It should be stocked at Best Buy stores, certainly at Sony stores as well. We've got Photoshop CC running here, and the big exciting news is finally we have a WinTab driver for pressure sensitivity in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop always worked with the pen. It was just the pressure sensitivity that was an issue. So we're running Photoshop CC here again, but this should work with all later versions of Photoshop. We have our pen right here. And again, we're going to do a complete demo of all sorts of art apps because I think that this 15.5-inch dis display is just a dream come true for artists who are tired of working on little Surface Pro 2 screens, that kind of thing. And just to show pressure sensitivity, I'm going light, and now I'm going to go heavy, light, finally it's here. As always, Entrig has very good tip accuracy. There's no offset to the pen. I don't have to spend a lot of time doing calibrations like I do with Wacom digitizers to get the pen to line up with what I'm seeing on the screen here. Also goes out to the edges very nicely, so it's great to finally see this for those of you who want to use Photoshop. Art Rage is also bundled. That's a fine... Windows Ink API based art program, so you don't even have to worry about it with WinTab drivers for that. That works great too. And again, we'll have a separate art demo just so you can see that and inking demo with OneNote as well. So that's the Flip 15. It's available now in a variety of configurations. And honestly, yeah, we had reservations about the Flip 13, but the Flip 15 is impressing us. Dedicated graphics, good for some light to mid weight gaming. Really, really a nice size screen for those of you who want to do digital art. We now have Adobe Photoshop pressure sensitivity. Speedy, light, decent battery life, very thin, very stylish, and an intelligent convertible design.
I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and hit that subscribe button.